welcome to Hangout Cafe. This this is not your first time on doing a live Instagram thing, is it? Um, I think I did one with Chibundu. <laughs> yes, Sometime I remember. Ago. Yes, I think I remember you did one with um, Chibundu. So, sir, it is such a pleasure to have you here. And everyone, we're all waiting, waiting to hear all you have to say. A lot of these people here. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. Oh, a lot of these people, sir, is this submission issue that they're here for? They want to hear what you have to say about <laughs> submission <laughs> issue. <laughs> but before we get into the... Um, into the subject of today let's let me just tell you a little bit about dr Zizzo. for those who don't know a lot of people know him as pastor reverend but i'm not sure a lot of people actually know that he's a consultant nephrologist he actually opened the first private dialysis hospital in nigeria and he's the chief medical director that he's been running it for years and dr Nuzo has been born again since 1970 Wow, before some of us were even born, he's been born again. And he's, <laughs> he's, um, he was um, associate pastor at um, uh, four, four Square, is it Four Square? Yes, yeah, Four Square. Four Square. For, National Headquarters Church. Yes, for 30 years, if I uh, remember. And uh, now you have your own, I don't know, is it, is it should I, can I call it a church? Kingdom Life. No, it's not a cult. It's a ministry. It's a ministry. It's a discipleship ministry. ministry. Yes. Okay. And um, that was started how many years ago, sir? 2011. That's um, 20, 10 years this year. Oh, wow, it's already 10 years. Yes. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. So he started that 10 years ago. And um, he's a man who, I don't even know how he finds it because he's very busy, but he's, first of all, he's married to wonderful amazing auntie Miriam. she's absolutely a wonderful woman and um, he has four children uh okay i have to tell them i remember when after i had tubo and dr news was trying to convince me to have another one he said there's a gap i think there's a gap between your first two and your last two yes seven you, years yes are you trying how many years seven years in between seven years okay I remember you were trying to convince me to have after Tubo, but it didn't happen, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen. And um, Dr. Thomas was written, he's written lots of books, I think 10 books now. Um, and all these books are on Amazon, right, sir? Yes. Yes, okay. I mean, Pathway to Conversational Prayer. Um, the last two that he wrote, did you write them during this lockdown? Yes, yes. So spiritual intelligence. I mean, I've read most of his books. Um, and the last two, I've also read the last two, spiritual intelligence, really good. You guys should get it. It's on Amazon. And then the one that inspired um, this hangout session, Between Love and Submission, amazing book. You have to get it. Ladies, get it for yourself and your husband. Singles, get it. It will help you with this issue of submission. You need to get and it's if you um this one, if you want the book, send me a DM and we'll arrange how to sort out the book for you. It's not yet available on Amazon. It's available on Kindle, but if you want the physical book, send me a DM and we've got all the, we've got some copies here. And if you're in Nigeria, again send me a DM. We'll sort out how to get it to you. So let's get to the matter of today. And oh, one thing before um, we start, I need to let you know that if you've got questions, please just pop the questions in the question box. Put the questions in the question box, please. But sir, how do you find the time to write so many books? <laughs> well, I really must uh, give all the glory to God. Let me tell you something. I wrote, I started writing um i wrote my first book really out of frustration okay because i used to um give talks on um hearing from god how people can hear from god okay. and usually after i've done like two hours and the first question always is but how do i know it is god mm. and i was like this is what i've been talking about for the last two hours <laughs> so 
when this thing kept happening the same way all the time, yes. and I wrote Pathway to Conversational Prayer. Oh, okay. uh, after I, done, I wrote that, then the marriage question, then the follow-up of young Christians, the convert and the counselor, a book for counselors and a book for converts, the anointing really came down. And I wrote like um, five, six books in two years. Wow. But then I didn't publish any. Okay, why so I began, to, I began to grumble that you mean writing all these books and not being able to publish any. So in all of that, the anointing just went. Ooh, However, let me say what happened. Yes, we're grumbling and complaining. <laughs> now let That's me tell you what happened during this lockdown. I kept praying that this anointing will return. I kept praying because a, a lot of my books were on Amazon on Kindle, but I haven't, I wasn't able to do the paperback. Okay. So now the Amazon paperback have become available, but now you can't put a book you wrote like 20 years ago up now. So I had to review um, quite a few of the books and I've reviewed um, a, a few of them. But in the middle of that, I wrote, um, um, spiritual intelligence, which was actually a message I gave in a church and they transcribed it and sent it to me. And it was lying in my computer for years. Oh, wow. So during this lockdown, I picked that up and, and reviewed it and published it. Okay. But then this particular one, uh, Between Love and Submission, yes. it was inspired by my children. Okay. My daughter, Delichi, kept saying, Daddy, I've heard you say so many things during these your seminars on, on marriage, and a lot of people are suffering. You need to do a book on Between Love and Submission. Yes. Well, the name ended up Between Love and Submission. It wasn't <laughs> what it started off as. It, was, it started off as to have and to hold. Okay. Till death do you pass. That part, that's what it started off as. Okay. Um, and then we kept reviewing it and my daughter said, no, it needs to answer that question. Yes. It, it was answered in the book, but my daughter kept saying, no, this is the question you should answer. So we kept revising and reversing and revising. Oh no, is it internet? Oh, it's not internet. Wow. Okay, whilst we wait for him to get back, no more complaining. See what happens when we complain. So I'm not going to complain anymore. Can you guys hear me? Or am I the one that's frozen? Please let me know if you can hear me. Oh, okay. Oh, internet issues. Let's see. Uh, let me. Let me try and get him back again. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you can hear me fine. That's great. Okay, so no more complaining. Okay. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, I can hear you. I think the internet went off. Oh, dear. Yeah, it must be here. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so that was what inspired um, the, um, the book. Great. Now, before we go into the book, in your previous book, um, You May Kiss the Bride, that's another one people should buy. You May Kiss the Bride. You stated that there are three things we are in search of when choosing yes. um, a life partner. What are, yes. the, what are the three things? Well, the three things... Um... Um, it, all, again, those ideas crystallized over time. Those three things are um, the love of my life. You know, everybody wants to marry the love of their life. Yeah. And this is someone they are seriously physically attracted to, you know. And no, uh, please, the example sir, in the Bible. Sir, let, me, let me just ask a question. Because you said seriously physically attracted to. Because I've oh, heard yes. some people say that you don't have to be physically attra attracted to the person. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I've heard some people say, as if God tells you that this is the person, don't worry, that physical attraction will come. That's the exception that proves the rule. <laughs> yes. 
I don't I don't know how many people will say that they married somebody who they were not physically attracted to. That's the that's the odd exception. Okay. You know, because if you look into the Bible, you will see that um, we have an example in Jacob. He was so deeply physically attracted to Rachel. Yes. yes. You know, yes. that um, he was ready to serve seven years for her. Yes. And then when they gave him Leah, he was so disappointed. And they said, oh, serve another seven years. And he was like, no problem. I'll serve another seven years. But I just must marry Rachel. Yes. So, so this is the real type of uh, passion and people normally should have for their son. But accepted, not everybody had that degree of passion. It's always good to make sure that there is passion. Yes. Because if there is no passion, then the physical relationship will not be possible. Mm. There must be phys a passion and physical attraction. Okay, so the next thing, I'm not stating them in the order of significance. The next thing is um, um, love for life. What do I mean by love for life? Love for life is somebody who won't quit midway. Mm. You know, you no, no, you don't need anybody who will quit midway. You know, so oh, what's the problem? So oh, I just can't go on anymore. So what's the problem? So I'm falling out of love. Uh oh, no, 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 no. You know, you don't need that type of relationship. You want somebody who is there. And as you both take your vows for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, all of that until death or, or, or rapture, do you part? Yes. <laughs> so I you're like quietly it. confident that um, they'll be there for you and you'll be there for them all through life. And then, of course, the, the third, you know, which I think is the pivot of the, of the other two, uh, is uh, um, the person with whom I will fulfill the purposes of God for our lives. That, in other words, it has to be, he or she has to be my traveling companion. Mm. Somebody, you see, traveling companion, when people travel together, they assist each other. And, and, and life is a journey. And you have to have somebody who is a traveling companion. Not everybody can be a traveling companion. Okay? So you can marry somebody who wants to go to, uh, you're in London, so they, they, they want to go to Edinburgh. But um, you, 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 are, you are going to Cardiff. Ah, you don't need that type of traveling companion. Because they won't be there when you need them. You need someone who will come along with you and together, you know, you, you will assist them to fulfill their destiny. They will assist you to fulfill your destiny. In other words, both of you are traveling in the same direction. Yes. Now, the problem with, with that third one, which is actually uh, uh, the controlling one, in my opinion, okay, the problem with it is that there's no way you can know that. Oh, and even the second one, uh, 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 a love for life, somebody who will be there, there's no way you can know that. Okay. So it takes the Holy Spirit to say to you, as you are poised to make that decision. Yes. This fellow is not a traveling companion. You may like them. You may, you may really fancy so many, but they're not a traveling companion. Okay. Or this fellow, yes, you may fancy them, but they are not love for life. Mm -hmm. You know, they may be so passionate and fall all over you and all of that, but they're not love for life. I have testimonies of this because a lady walked into my office once and, I say, and said to me, I hate my husband. <laughs> I said, you hate your husband? He said, yes, I hate him very much. I said, ah, so why did you marry him? She <laughs> said to me, answer. well, she said to me, um, he said he would die if I didn't marry him. <laughs> I said, oh, and you didn't really want him to die. I said, but the tragedy is that I think he, he, he went off with somebody else. Oh, and wow. that's, that's really what you don't want to hear. Wow. wow. Somebody who will go off with someone else, you know. That they're not love for life, you know. So no matter how, so so you you, you want the, the Holy Spirit to help you eliminate all these unnecessary heartaches, you know, yeah. so that you can have someone that um, you know may, may, maybe leave you with one or two children and walk off with somebody else, you know, and then you you don't know what to do with your life and wondering um, is it okay to remarry? Is it not okay? You know, all kinds of things, you know. So now, anyway, I was going to say, Chibunde just asked you a question. She said, how did you know that Aunt Miriam was your traveling companion? Oh, you know, they, they will always stay. If they say, if, they, if heaven says to you, go with this person, you, you know, that's why we live by faith. You know that, you know, they must be your traveling companion. So you, did you? That's so why you, you can, 
So you had you, to you cannot make those decisions yourself. Okay. Okay. So, so yes. because but but when I was single though, there were yes. people, you know, because I was preaching, there were quite a few people around me, and the Holy Spirit would keep telling me, No, this is not one of this is not your kind of person. This is not your kind of person. You know, so they'll tell you that this is not your kind of person. Even though you may like them or they may like you, or whatever, but they said they are not your kind of people. They are not people who can travel with you. Okay. okay. The, actually, the truth of the matter is that you really don't know what you need in a, a wife or husband in life. You don't know it. How can you know it? You've never been a wife before. True. You know, True. so you can't say I have experience. You've, you may have observed people, but if no matter how you have closely you've observed people, they are not you. They're not you. That's true. Even your parents are not you. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to Auntie Maria now. How were you able to cross the bridge of integration in your marriage, especially because uh, you're Igbo and she's um, Yoruba? How were you able to bridge that in, inter, inter, inter... What did I call it now? Integration. integration. Yes. You know, you know, many people... Many people told me that uh, um, that marriage was dead. This my marriage was dead on arrival, okay. and and there are many reasons. You've only mentioned one that we are from different tribes. There are all the reasons. I, I I I come from a very very conservative, you know, family background, you know, and and uh, uh, she she's, she grew up in Lagos. She's a city person. I'm not. I wasn't a city person. Okay. You know, I grew up in the, in the East, in our, in our communities there, you know. And, um, um, but you see, you didn't, you didn't have to uh, uh, analyze all this. We did have quite a few arguments. In fact, we had arguments almost literally all through the country. We had okay. arguments that if you used arguments uh, as a basis for making decisions of who to marry or not to marry, we should never have gotten married. And I recall that um, on the day of the wedding, as we were traveling from the church to the reception, we were having an argument at the back of the car. And the chief bridesmaid sitting in front said, I just can't believe that you two have just gotten married. <laughs> but um, in spite of all that, we are, we are um, how, how many years now? This is our 43rd year. Wow. Wow. Yes, so so you, you can't really judge these things. But once the spirit, you know, once the spirit says it's okay to go, then it's okay to go. Wow. Whatever is going to happen on the road, down the road, ah, he, he knows it's workable. That's why I, I trust the spirit more than I trust, much more than I trust my own judgments. Mm -hmm. Once I have a conviction in my heart that this is the way to go, then I know this is the way to go. So, but you couldn't look at the way we courted and say, oh, I'm sure these people will fall apart in another, you know, three months. Yeah. Self. They may not last uh, uh, six months. <laughs> because we are two doctors also, don't forget. Yes. And um, we, we met, we met in, in a kind of brain thrust atmosphere. A, a, a professor who's a mutual friend. We, that's where we used to go and debate and, and, you know, brain thrust, all that type of thing. You know, that was the antecedent to the relationship. Yeah. Can I ask you a question, sir? It just occurred to me now. Are you, can you say you're still in love with Auntie Miriam like you were? Oh, yes, I am. It's just oh. that if you ask her, she'll tell you that I don't talk about it. I'm <laughs> one of those people. <laughs> sir, when was I say, that? We say that love is not something you talk about. Love is something you do. <laughs> we are one of those people. So, and I keep telling them, which one would you rather have? Um, somebody who's always waking up. I love you, I love you, I love you. Okay. But then if you say, can you help me lift this uh, piece of paper? Oh, no. No, don't ask me to do that again, please. Uh -huh. <laughs> so which one would you rather have? Somebody who talks about it. And somebody said, I'd rather have somebody who does both. Yes. yes. They talk about it and they do it. <laughs> well, I wish life were all like that. Everybody has what they have. But oftentimes you have people who do one better than they do the other. <laughs> But, sir, but um, if if I had to choose, I would choose uh, somebody who who 
doesn't talk a, a, a lot about it, but what they do it? a lot about it. <laughs> they talk occasionally, you know. We talk occasionally. We say, I love you. She will say, I love you, you know, occasionally. <laughs> but um, it's, it's not the bedrock of our relationship. It's in the doing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sir, but you know tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Yes. So have you prepared anything special for her? Oh well, no, but you know that people have uh, people have different ideas about this. I have actually researched this Valentine. Yes. So you know, I'm always quite careful not to uh, plunge into something. So I kept wondering, what is this really all about? Yes. And they say it's the monk. They say it's the monk that um, that loved the girl. I, I just couldn't find out what the whole thing is all about. Okay. One monk loved one girl, and, and 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 then, you know. So when people are celebrating these things. I, I try to find out what it's about. Yes. You know, and uh, I haven't found an answer that is very convincing. So I don't do Valentine generally. Okay. But I have to be honest. No, that's, that's so that my wife, my wife can corroborate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So but that's... really, but really, when people say they do Valentine. They, they say they hang out, they go and have a meal outside. I said, well, all of that you can do, you know, anytime you want. It yeah. doesn't have to be one day wonder in your life. No, you can do it anytime you like and really um, um, show, show um, that you care for each other. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. But um, tomorrow, I, I know you don't celebrate Valentine's Day, but tomorrow, please tell Auntie Mariam that you love her. Just say, Sweetheart, I love you. Okay. I'm, I'm taking a lesson from you now. <laughs> okay. So, sir, in your book, um, Between Love and Submission, you said the Bible has two key words that determine the outcome of a great marriage. So let's talk about those two key words now. Yes, because the Bible says, wives, submit to your husbands, and, the, and then husbands, love your wives. You know, and if you notice in that scripture, it didn't say uh, wives submit to husbands. Mm, your own he husband. said wives submit to your own, yes. your own husband. Okay. And then he said husbands love your wives. He didn't say you know uh, 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 treat everybody the same. No, treat your wives differently. Mm. You know, treat your wife differently. Love your wife. Take care of her. Care for her. You know. Make sure she's happy married to you, you know. Make sure you have a, a, a relationship that um, is fulfilling in, in very, various respects for each of you, you know. Okay, so, sir. So, so. Yeah, go on. Sorry, sir. So, so um, submission um, is a, a very important principle because before he said, why submit to your husband? Yes. Yeah. He said, being submissive one to another. In other words, mutual submission mm -hmm. was the first thing. And every Christian is supposed to um, know that we are mutually submitted to each other. Otherwise, there will be no harmony. We won't be able to function together. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? So there is a sense in which a wife is submitted to her husband. And also there's a sense in which a husband is submitted to his wife. And so... Uh, um, it is natural that in some situations um, I have to come behind my wife, you know, and, and follow what, you know. In fact, mo in most things, most things really, women, women are leading their husbands. You know, it's just that um, uh, in a few things, the husband wants to take, but one, a gentleman said in our class, uh, me medical school classroom, stop fighting with your wife, just... Uh, just uh, listen to her, and then you, you can have a lot of your... Yes, a yes. lot of times, yeah. men, men, men don't want to listen to their wife. They create unnecessary ripples. <laughs> but a lot of times, I find that when you have to make a decision, your, your wife is quick, and she's made those decisions, and you look at it, yes, those are the, 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 there are some like the right decisions to make in this situation, and you check with God, say yes. So the fact that your wife made it doesn't mean anything. So you follow what your wife is saying. And a lot of times, that's, that's really what happens. Mm, you know, wow. if you now sit down to check, you find that a lot of times, that is really what happens. 
you're, 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 you're following what your wife is saying and doing in many things. Yeah. In many things. But then some men come and like, no, no. Why should she be the one saying it? I said, ah, if what she's saying is right, there's no problem. There's no problem. You know? Fantastic. Yes, if what she's saying is right. If she's quick enough to bring ideas here, bring ideas there. Yes, you know, you cannot reject the idea because she's the one who brought it. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. You know. Thanks. And now and again then, when you have the issues of where, you know, you, you disagree, that's where the spirit helps, you know, because you have to find out as the head of the home yeah. who is speaking for God. You, you gave an example in your book. Um, I think there was an instance where um, something to do with a car and um, Antimera... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Issues. Yes, we, 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 we returned from America and we wanted to buy a car. And um, she said that um, we should buy a Jetta, a Volkswagen Jetta, that um, we can't afford a Volvo. But uh, because I had wanted to buy a Volvo on, on that trip, but then because... I went with all the family the way God instructed. I couldn't save up money to do that. But I still told God that I would still have to buy the Volvo. And I found the Volvo, you know. But my wife would not agree. And because we could not agree, I couldn't get the loan from the bank. <laughs> you know, so eventually I begged her, I said, please, don't worry about the money. Just agree with me, you know, agree with me. So she said, well, anyway, I can agree with you, but um, I, I, I don't think we can afford it. That's the, that we have the money to pay for it. Mm -hmm. To cut a long story short, within one week of agreeing with me, the Volvo was parked in front of our house. Wow. wow. So a lot of people don't know the power of that agreement. Because these are, these are the things that are in Scripture. If two of you shall agree. Yes. If two of you shall agree. Okay. And so you, you have all those biblical principles at the back of your mind. And you know that if you're disagreeing with your wife on a particular issue, particularly if you need God to intervene, yes. ah, you have to fulfill all righteousness then. Yep, yep, yep. Instead of saying, oh, well, I can do it with or without you. No, 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 no. That's not the way to go. You know, the power you, you try and, and, and understand the principles that control life, spiritual principles that control life. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, you try your best to get that agreement so that heaven can come behind it yeah yeah there's another thing you said in your book that uh, i love you said um you told auntie miriam earlier on that i don't want to know what you think i don't know what you know what i think but it's what the holy spirit thinks i think that's how you yes because that's how two people who are analytical argumentative can reduce their quarrels <laughs> you know yes because sometimes uh, um, I have these ideas, you have these ideas, and they are in, in going in divergent uh, uh, manner, you know. So, so there is no need to do that. So let us both pray. If God reveals something to you, tell me. Because it is the, what God reveals, that's what we are going to do. Mm. And the reason is because the future is unknown to us. But what God reveals has taken care of the future. Yes, yes. Yes. So, so that's why that's why that principle helped us, particularly in those early days where so many decisions are, about life, about children, and all of that are coming in. You 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 cannot make them with your mind because you don't see the future. Yeah. So yep. it has to be what God is revealing, and God can reveal to you, can reveal to your wife, and when your children are grown up, that not even grown up big or no grown up, just able to express their. It, the, God can also speak through them. And, mm -hmm. and it's important to know who God is speaking through yes. because it is what God is saying yes. that we will, we will do. The Bible says there are many desires in the hearts of a man, mm -hmm. yes. but the counsel of the Lord, that's what will stand. Yes. And yes. that counsel of the Lord has taken care of the past, present, and the future. Mm, preach it. Preach, preach that. Wow. So you're dropping so many, I don't know if you they're dropping what we call nuggets. So many nuggets, sir. So many nuggets. This will not be the last time you're coming. You have to come again, sir, because there are other <laughs> things I wanted to talk about. Seriously, sir. Okay, let me ask the question. And I posted this on the Instagram page. The question was, which comes first, love or submission? Yes, um, um I had to 
um, carefully look into the scripture to determine which really comes first. Because some people say, um, I heard that some people were saying that because they said wives submit to your own husbands, okay, yes. that the wife's submission must come first. But what tells us which of them comes first yes. is husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. Mm -hmm. That statement defines whose love, which, whether love or submission comes first. Because once you say, as Christ yes. loved the church, yes. you see, they say, wives submit to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Yes. Okay? Now, yes. submission to the Lord is a response. Mm. It's not the initiative. Mm. But, but then, love, as Christ loved the church, the love of Christ is the initiative yes. where, while we were yet sinners. Yes. That's when Christ died for us. Wow. So the love of Christ is the initiative to which we all are responding. Yes. Whoa. So we are submitting to Christ because of his love. Wow. And so we can say categorically without fear of any contradiction. That the love of man drives the of the man drives the relationship because he is Ooh. loving as Christ loves the church, loved the church and gave himself for it or for her. Wow. So so it's really not um, a, a matter of debate. It is a, a matter of apportioning of responsibility. So that if I understand what my responsibility, what the expectations of heaven are of me ah. in this relationship i know that i must keep driving the initiative to love and care okay under every circumstance not under some under every circumstance you know ah. and um, and um, uh, nobody needs to lecture me on that because i'm i'm trying to model the love of christ mm. that's what the the bible has put up for me love your wife the way christ loved the church, loved the church. And, and made a sacrifice so, so it is um, it's, it's something to be understood. It's not really an argument. Once you see it in the Bible, then you can, you can do it, yeah. and then you'll be blessed. Because as the scripture says in James chapter 1, only the doers of the word are blessed. Mm. Oh, gosh. <sighs> Sir, you know, every time I hear you, especially when you come to church and you preach, every time I hear you speak, I always want to be born again, again. <laughs> I always feel that I have to be born again. No, my goodness. But, but how come there's so much lack of understanding about this issue? Because every time the issue of submission comes up, there's a whole lot of controversy surrounding it. it why is it that, and even some of, I'm sorry to say, sir, but even some of the pastors and the preachers, they still preach, they don't preach, I mean, they don't explain it, the, they've never explained it the way you have just explained it for us. Oh, because perhaps they're, they're just repeating each, uh, each other, you know? They are not really looking at the scriptures. Because that's what often happens. You may find yourself repeating things that you caught from other people. True. Until you look at it yourself and you're like, uh oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> this thing is not right now. Mm -hmm. You know? So, so it's when you study it, you know, like you have, you, you have I've, I've pointed it out that it's when you look at it, then you can say which comes first. Because to say that submission should come before love is to say that Christ saw us submitting to him in heaven. Mm -hmm. Then as a result of our submission, he came down and loved us. Ah, uh ah. -uh. You know, immediately, you know, it's not, it's not, yeah. this is not the way it was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's why the Apostle Paul said in um, 2 Corinthians 5, 14, said the love of Christ compels us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It is because we saw how much he loved us, how much he sacrificed for us. Even, even uh, in, uh, incarnation, the, the, the incarnation itself, that God became a man, is a lot of sacrifice. Yes. yes. So he said, is the love, is that love that Christ has for us that is driving us in everything, all the sacrifices we need to make, all the humility, everything that we need to do is, is, the, is the pattern and the life of Christ that is driving us. Yes. Now, yes. to say that submission should now come before uh, uh, love, Oh, yeah. Is to put the gospel, you know, turn it upside down. Hmm. Ah, 
folks i have been blessed get the book get the book get the book get the book <laughs> let me see we have some questions let me see if, um um there's a question sir one um that if the man doesn't love the woman can she submit can she still submit? oh yes yes she can still submit the reason is because um it's um it's um it's 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 a matter of spiritual maturity in that book you'll find what i call godliness you know godliness is people who want to do what god wants yes. whether the other person is doing it or not yeah. you know so you see if you're a godly person yes. then you become the example you become the inspiration mm -hmm. yes so yes. it's it's what that what we're saying is that the way the bible has put it okay yeah. The man is supposed to be leading and then uh, 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 the family is supposed to be following behind him, yeah. you know. And, and, and what is he leading? He's leading to uh, be like Christ. Mm -hmm. The man is being like Christ. The woman is being like Christ. But the man is, the example is inspiring the rest of the family. However, if the man is not doing that, the woman can do that so that the spirit will have her as the walking companion in that family. The, yes. the Holy Spirit must have a walking companion in a family. Wow. Yeah. So that that person would be the person whose decrees and prayers will be endorsed by heaven hmm. because they're obedient. Hmm. You see, a lot of people don't know that without obedience. Oh no, Jesus, it was obedience that made Jesus who he, he was yes. uh, before God and man. Yes, yes. It's, it's obedience. He said, I always do what the father wants. I always do what pleases the father. He said, the father, in John chapter 8, he said, the father is always with me because I always do what pleases him. Yeah. That is it. So if somebody, one of two parties to a relationship, is always doing yes. what the father wants, yes. ah, then the spirit will be with that person. Wow. And, and um, there the are homes. I, I have heard about homes, you know, where the spiritual controls are with the woman. You know, mm. and she's the one that gets revelations. She's the one that gets the insights. And every time the man tries to go against those revelations and things she's saying, yeah. something always happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, something always happens. But and, guess... and and it's the same way that the Bible says in in um, um, First Peter three seven that men should deal with their wives with knowledge, yeah. so that their prayers will not okay. be and uh, will not be hindered yes. so all these are you know but, but take a scripture like that you know a woman can then turn around and say look oh, you know if i'm not happy yeah, will just, your prayer will just be bouncing off the ceiling <laughs> that is not what such scriptures are meant for is to encourage us to help one another be and do what god wants yes. okay yes. you know and then sometimes um, you 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 you, you do a session like this where you establish that love is what inspires submission. Yes. And then somebody goes home and says, well, I need to get you something. A, a woman goes home and that I need to get you some book to read. Though, because uh, <laughs> if you want submission, you know what to do. Because I don't think you know what to do to get submission. So, so you don't come to sessions like this to acquire ammunition to go and fight at home. <laughs> ah, no, this is not what sessions like this are. Is, is to understand godly principles yes. so that you can go and apply them to your in your relationship yes. you know between love and submission is not to uh, uh, tilt the fight in, 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 the, on, in, the, in the favor yes no that's not what it is it's to raise godly men and women yes. who will do what god wants and so they will be so blessed yes. you know you know there are blessings that money can buy but there are so many blessings that money can buy mm -hmm. Yeah. And those ones, they, 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 you can know, measure them by the, the degree of obedience you bring in the area. Yes. Oh, you know, wow. I, I, um, um, a, a, a couple must always know that they're modeling this thing for their children. They asked a oh. the young man, why are you uh, uh, delaying uh, uh, marrying? He said, my, my, my parents are not happy you know, in their own marriage. So I, I, don't, I don't look forward to it because it seems as if you marry and then you become very unhappy. That's a terrible thing to say That's for it. a young man. Yeah. Yes. And that means the parents didn't inspire them. That, they, that there's a mutual uh, 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 love and submission going on in the home and that everybody's happy. 
you know, everybody's happy in their home. Oh, thank you so much, sir. Okay, many, many questions. Um, how does culture play a role in your marriage and submission? How does culture play a role oh, culture. in marriage? Oh, culture. yes, that's a very big problem because when people are cultural, you know, they, they, they have a cultural orientation to everything. Okay. But what I tell them is that... Um, let us not forget that Christianity itself is a culture, you know. So you have to put down your own culture and take up the Christian culture. So your question is not how do uh, Igbo people behave. No, it's how do Christians mm, behave. Behave, so behave, yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. We have a culture, Christians, we have a, a, our own culture. Yes. And if the, 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 the culture I was raised in yes. has the same value system as the one as the christian culture then there's no issue mm. but if it contradicts it oh no i have to go with the christian the reason is because it's only the obedience to god that will bring the blessing mm. and i need god with mm. me on every journey on yeah. every matter in every situation i need god with me yeah. because he has all the power to make life easier for me yeah. Yeah. Wow. so that's a Christian culture. And that's what you'll encourage every couple. And that's, that's actually the purpose of all these marriage seminars. Understand that you, you come from your background. I come from my background. Yeah. But we are coming to practice Christian First culture. culture not, the Christian way of life. I yes, that's what, that's what we're coming to practice. And that's that. why we can, we, can, we can make progress yeah. no matter our backgrounds. I love that. I love that. It is Christian culture, not how... Evil people behave when you remember people no, behave. No, 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 no. Wow, no. I love it's the that. Christian culture. Christian culture. Okay. Um, wives be your husband's helpmate. Does this mean that the wife should leave their dreams to help their husbands? No, it's a, that's what it's a mutual thing. You're helping your your husband. Your husband is helping you. You know. See, you find this is what that's why I talked about traveling companion. Yes. If two people are traveling in the same direction, yes. oh, they assist each other in fulfilling um, uh, their destinies. It's, it's to be sure that nobody is suppressed or suppressed, mm -hmm. you know, in their relationship. Yes. You know, I, I've, I've known uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, pe uh, pastors who came to me and said, My wife is not. Um, uh, uh, active in the ministry the way I really would want to look at uh, Pastor uh, Peter you know his wife is right there in front with him and I've always asked them I said did the God call your wife mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he said well it's me he called her. so take <laughs> as much help take as much help as she can give yeah. other helps will come to, yeah. to, to assist you yeah. yes yeah. so so let her uh, uh, answer her calling to the degree she feels called. Yes. So, so don't, don't, don't turn her into Mama Yard if she doesn't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, sir, that is so prevalent among, especially um, Nigerians, where as soon as the um, husband is made a pastor, he's a pastor, runs a church, automatically they feel that the wife too has to be Mama Yard or whatever they call it. Not so, necessarily. So Not necessarily. <laughs> Yes, I've, I've known congregations where the head of the women's ministry, somebody, a mature woman in the church, mm -hmm. and, and the wife is just, um, you know, quite, and, and you see, where you have that, the wife is quite happy mm -hmm. to, to tag along and have them, those who want to do it, to do it, you know, <laughs> you know. But some people, they will not uh, want to do it, but they want to lead it. I say, ah, it's not possible now. <laughs> You're just going to be a, a, a dog in the manger, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so if you feel a sense of uh, calling, some people have um, they felt so much sense of calling that they reduce what else they are doing in order to face uh, the ministry. Yes, that is the. But some other people also continued whatever they were doing mm -hmm. and helped as much as they are able. Yes. Yeah. And it's the, the 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 thing is that they have husbands who understand that and can go along with it. Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry. So th there's no real formula. There's no real formula out there. 
It's when you turn life into a formula, it must be this way. That's when you just create all kinds of unnecessary problems. Mm -hmm. I, I remember one thing you said. It was somebody that asked you a question about um, what, what, what happens if your wife can't cook? And I remember you said, did you marry her because she can't cook? If she can't cook, get, get someone who can cook. You, Absolutely. You, <laughs> you know, you know. But you see, in the traditional culture, it will be like a, a horrendous uh, uh, tragedy, yeah. you know. How can you but, um, can cook? <laughs> yes. And, but um, uh, you, you later now, you discover that what ma matters is to eat good food. The matter <laughs> of who cooked it is another, it's totally different, you know. After when you go to the restaurant, do you, do you know who cooked it? <laughs> That's so true. Because the wife, you can say you, you want to eat your wife's food all the time and she can't really cook and the food is not good. <laughs> well, often, often really, often times, you find that when that happens, if you are really in the will of God, you find that the husband may have some uh, uh, culinary uh, skill yes. that could help. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm enjoying this so much. Um... Okay, okay, so this is a, a good one. How does a spouse love or submit to a partner that is verbally abusive? Yes, that's a that's a very important question. So when 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 people are verbally abusive, then they you need to that's why the family altar helps. You 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 study scriptures that speak about that, okay? Um, um, Ephesians 4.20 Ephesians 4.29 says let no corrupt communication mm. proceed from your mouth only what is a defiant that it may minister grace to the hearers. The same thing in Colossians 4.6 let your words be seasoned with salt. Mm -hmm. so, so there are scriptures and then you can go to uh, uh, James chapter 3 you know and, and, and look at how the Bible speaks about the tongue that uh, sets fire, you know, the fire of hell to everything. So when, when you study these scriptures, you realize that, oh, no, I can't continue like this. And then because you understand how change comes to the Christian, then sooner than later, all those things begin to change. That's why every Christian must understand how we are changed. Because a lot of people think that we are changed by good wishes. No, wishes don't change people. Oh. No, 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 no. The first thing in change yeah. is desire. Do you really want to change? Yes. Or do you enjoy abusing people? Mm -hmm. You know, because if you don't want to change, there is nothing the Holy Spirit can do. Yeah. Sure. Sure. But if you want to change, and then you want to change because you have seen in the word of God yes. that the way you are living, mm -hmm. the way you are carrying on with your mouth yeah. is wrong. Uh -huh. So, if you, if you see that the way you are living or carrying on is wrong, and you don't desire to change, then something is fundamentally wrong with your Christianity. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, the, 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 the 2 Timothy 3.16, you know, the word of God, you know, uh, uh, is given to us for correction, for instruction, you know, for training in righteousness, that the, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. So, so correction, you see, ah, the Bible is against what I'm doing, so I need to stop. So now, once I realize I need to stop, and then I go to God in prayer and say, Lord, the way I am speaking to my wife or the way I am speaking to my husband mm -hmm. is wrong. Mm -hmm. Spirit of the living God, please help me. help me. Help me. I want to change. You see, once they look into your heart and find that, there is seriously a desire to change. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Wow. When you change now, when you find that you are no longer talking like that before, you won't even know that they've done it until you realize that, ah, I don't talk like that again. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's what I, call, I tell people. There is a mystical side to our life as Christians that something happens, you cannot tell when or where or yeah. how. Yeah. Only find that by taking it to God, by sincerely desiring the change and asking to be changed, something happens in you that you cannot explain. Mm -hmm. 
And so you can look back and say, ah, you know, if it was before, you know, I could have said a thousand and one things here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit has told me that that's not the way to live. Uh -huh. so they See, and that's how we really help unbelievers come to Christ. Because those of them who knew us before, yeah. then they will turn around and say, this man has changed though. Okay. Or this woman has changed though. I know it. Okay. So, so in the process, whilst this man or woman is still trying to change, what does the abused um, spouse do? Uh, make sure that you don't abuse back. Oh. Okay. Because if you abuse back, ah, yeah, yeah, <laughs> then God doesn't have a partner in that marriage. Okay, yes. And the way, the way not to abuse back is when they start on that road, you enter into the closet in your mind and say, Lord, this one thing this man is saying, this thing this woman is saying, yeah. how do I respond? Okay. You see, you are, you, are, you are a man under control, under, a woman under authority. Yes. You want the Holy Spirit to take control of the situation, but then let the Holy Spirit first take control of me. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, if I want the Holy Spirit to take control of the situation, wow. he has to first take control of me. Wow. So wow. now, when, when he now tells me, no, don't say anything. So I don't say anything. And you find that when he tells me not to say anything and I don't say anything, yeah. the other person abusing me, after they, uh, they, they abuse and abuse and abuse, they kind of feel foolish <laughs> because I'm not responding. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. I'm not responding. And then that's how the Holy Spirit will begin to bring about change. But he must have a partner. I always tell people the Holy Spirit cannot work alone. He must have a partner in a situation. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. I think we, we actually do ourselves a great disservice by not um, listening, engaging, embracing the Holy Spirit often. Oh, that. yes. Oh. Ah, that's why they told us that um, um, don't do anything until the Holy Spirit comes home. Mm. You know, because he's going to lead you into all truth. He's going to be with you, watching and uh, supervising everything. Yes. He's going to be in you. You know, he was with the Old Testament uh, uh, prophets, yes. but he's within us. Mm. He's in us. That's the difference. Mm. 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 Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, let's take some more questions. Um... Okay, so I, well, I guess a continuation sort of from this question, you just the last one. So what advice would you give women in a violent marriage? Well, um, um, what I say to pastors yes. is that a church, whatever church they go to, must have zero tolerance for physical abuse. Mm. Zero. Thank you. you know, in some churches, um, in one particular denomination in Nigeria, they have a seat at the back of the church. Yeah. If a man abuses, physically abuses his wife or vice versa, they make a report to the pastor. And when they come to church, they must sit at that back seat. <laughs> so that when people walk into church and see them sitting there, they already know what they have done. <laughs> really? Wait, so Nigeria. in that church, oh yes, oh yes. Oh really? I've never oh, yes, heard in that, that church. Oh yes, in that church, if, if, a man abuses a woman physically, mm -hmm. he will be begging her not to report. <laughs> because he knows that if he reports, he will be sitting at the back. And, and they sit there for, for weeks, so it's not for once on the... <clears throat> wow. That's a stipulated number of weeks you must sit there. You wow. know? And I'm sure if a man sits there once, <laughs> he won't want to sit there again. <laughs> because then people will be saying, ah, Brother John, Hey, so you're still doing this thing. Every time I, you are sitting at the back. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, the ch that church, that organization, they've devised a way to curb all this type of bad behavior. But, but the church must have zero tolerance. Mm. I told a pastor once that the church must have a halfway house. Mm. A halfway house is if a woman is physically abused, yes. the church must tell the man, to please go and get some uh, counsel and treatment yes. and take the woman to a place where she'll be safe until the man has had some therapy or vice versa. Because yes. now they say women also beat men. 
yes, 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 yes. You well, know, so this is so I've never, I don't think I've ever, I, well, maybe some churches have, but what you've just said about having a house, a um, halfway house is so, such a, it's such a good idea. Oh, yes, that. oh, yes. Because that way, women In will fact, come forward. To, because a lot of women don't even come forward to tell their pastors that they've been abused at home. Because no, 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 no. I've, I've, I've always advocated that. In fact, in one church I, I, I visit, the pastor actually moved the woman. And immediately he moved the woman. The man went and married another wife. I says, yes. So why don't you say you want to marry another wife so that the woman can live her life? Why do you want to kill the woman because you want to marry another wife? Another wife. <laughs> yes. So the woman at least can live her life with her children while you go and marry another wife that you want to. Wow. <sighs> so you want to stay Christian so you kill the woman so you can marry another wife. No, don't kill the woman. Let the church help the woman uh, have, have a new life. If you don't want to marry another, then you can go and marry another wife. Wow. You know, so, so you, you, we shouldn't stand by and watch. That's the most important thing. Yeah. The church should not stand by and watch. And that's why such cases should be reported yes. to the pastor, you know. Okay. Um, hmm, so many questions. <laughs> what if, I, guess, I think this, you've answered this because you, the question is, what if the partner is not a Christian? But like you said, somebody has to be mature in the, in the relationship and somebody, the Holy Spirit will walk through that mature person, I guess. Yeah, well, if the partner is not a Christian, yeah. um, um, you cannot really uh, uh, say too much. Particularly um, if the, the, the one of them was a Christian before they got married. Okay. You know? So if one of them was a Christian before they got married, then they're creating a, a problem for themselves deliberately. Okay. Now, but if they were both um, unbelievers before they got married, and then one of them got converted, yeah. you no, know, those are situations that uh, you can then begin to address, because the, the Bible says if the unbeliever is uh, determined to continue in the relationship, the believer should not leave the relationship, mm -hmm. because the unbeliever uh, uh, has is yet to be converted, and what the Scripture says. In that First Corinthians seven passage is that through Christian character, yes. we will inspire the spouse that is not a believer to become a believer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that always happens. Not if we preach at home, but if we live Christian at home, mm -hmm. then we can inspire them to get converted. Yes. Yes. Some people only preach at home, but they don't uh, live Read Christian. Christian I said that would, that won't do it. Wow. What will do it is if we. Uh, uh, preach without words yes. through character transformation yes. then we can inspire the unbeliever mm. um, to come to Christ. This happens so many times. Oh. Oh, gosh, there's so many questions. But be, I, before I forget, there was something you said at the beginning. You know the scripture that says, wife, love, uh, submit to your own husband. Your own. Oh, yes. Why yeah. do they specify your own husband? Yeah, so that not, not every man that is out there will be expecting you to submit to them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they say, why submit to your own husband? And that's why, you see, in, in many places, if you want a woman to do something, you, you, you tell her husband so that you don't disrespect her husband. Mm, you know? Mm, mm. Yes. Mm, mm. Can your wife please help us mm. do this? Mm. Uh -huh. So he's aware that your, his wife is... Uh, helping you because you're recognizing his leadership yes. at home. Yes. It's not that um, his wife can't help you if she wants to. Mm. Uh, and and then, then, then people who say, well, uh, uh, um, ah, why should uh, uh, David uh, 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 ask him my husband? Uh, if they ask him, if I want to help them, I'll help them. Mm. Uh, whether my husband agrees or not. Ah, it, once you have that attitude, you have already given out to men and devils wow. that uh, something is wrong in your home. Wow. And then one day the devil is going to use it. Wow. You know, you know, the devil always uses things to go and get permission yes. to trouble yes. you. Yes. And, and you cannot give uh, the devil permission to come and trouble you by having such attitude and actually verbalizing it. Because words, words are like arrows. Yes. Once you shoot them, you can't call it back. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. 
Okay. Ah, oh, God, sir. I'm sure we're going to have to leave soon. <laughs> um, sir, what would you? What advice would you give a Christian woman in her thirties who wants to marry a man she has only met once? Only met once. I don't understand the question. I, I don't understand. You met once. Okay. In other words, they didn't cut at all. Yes. That's what it seems like. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you know, the, the, um, it is not a wise thing, though, because it's not that um, um, you, you, uh, uh, what we do in courtship mm -hmm. is to know um, the changes we need to make so that the marriage can work. Yeah. That's, a lot of people don't understand what we do in courtship. So if, I, if you come to my house, and you realize that, uh, like one lady told me, said he visited her fiancé, and he found that that spatula they used to make amala, yes. that he left it on the center table of his house. <laughs> you know, she said she she went home crying. <laughs> ah, this this man, he, he he finished making amala. He leaves the spatula on the center table of his house. <laughs> so so now. But what message has that given her? That if you want tidiness, so, <laughs> uh, this man is not going to help much. So to initially, so you need to be very tidy yourself, putting yes. away things, you know, because it doesn't seem to be someone who puts away things. Yes. You know, a woman said to me that uh, she's, she's very finicky about tidiness, mm -hmm. but his husband is like a hurricane. You know, he, when he blows through a place, it's all scattered. <laughs> so he said initially, you know, it was such a sore point for her, being finicky about tidiness and order. Okay. But then she said she kept tidying after him, tidying after him, and grumbling and grumbling, and there was so much stress all around. <laughs> so she said one day as she was praying, the Holy Spirit said to her, please, this, this man that is uh, like this, don't forget he has been like this for 20-something years of his life. <laughs> yes. And his mother was watching it. His father was watching it. And they all love him. <laughs> so you have come to join them to love him. <laughs> so love him as he is. And, and tidy as much as you can. But don't, don't nag him or criticize him. <laughs> because those who love him didn't. <laughs> so he said that that was what changed the matter. She realized that. You know, people don't change like that. They change slowly, mm -hmm. you know, because they've been like that for 25 years. Yeah. And all the people around them didn't, couldn't be bothered by the hurricane. And then you, know? you come and want to change him in one day. <laughs> Immediately. You no, know, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, and that's why we say you should marry people as they are. Yeah. Don't marry them because you hope that they will become something. Mm -hmm. No, marry them. as If you can't marry them as they are, then don't marry them more. <laughs> Oh, sir. <laughs> Somebody said, or oh, get a cleaner. <laughs> you know, you can keep it. Exactly. Yes. Oh, yes. People have done that. I've known homes where, where uh, people come in uh, regularly, sometimes once or twice a week, yes. to clean up things, tidy up things. And yes, uh, again, because the two people are, are otherwise engaged and so the other things. Yes. And this is not the domestic help. These are professional cleaners. <laughs> yes. These are not the domestic help. The domestic cares just do routine, but professional cleaners come to clean up the place. And we actually have been in homes where that happens. And when they finish, you know the difference. Oh, gosh. Okay, sir. One other question. We'll just take two more questions because we could go on and on. Um, somebody asks, what does the, what does the um, scripture that says, for this reason, a man should leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, what does it mean? What it means is that um, a woman always leaves father and mother. I've never seen a woman that marries and is staying with the father and the mother. Mm -hmm. So the scripture is saying to the man, also leave father and mother. Okay. okay? Some years ago, a lady came to me that the mother-in-law is um, always coming to the house to, uh, and, and, and shouting at her. And uh, telling her that she should pack out of the house. Okay. I said, where do you live? He said, in the guest uh, house of the parents-in-law home. I said, that's why now. 
Because if she, if you lived in a house of your own, you and your husband, and she will have to leave her house and travel to come to your own house, yes. and be telling you all this type of thing. Ah, you can tell Mama, please. Uh, when I come to your house, you can, uh, you know. In fact, it's the husband, a, a, a man, a woman told me that uh, um, one day her mother-in-law was visiting, and and she told, she went and told the son that um, it's time for her to take over the, his house, you know, that he doesn't like the way the, the wife is running the house. He, she wants to take over, you know, the house. The man did not answer. He's a big man. He went to work, you know. He withdrew plenty of money. And then when he came back, he called the mother. I said, you told me in the morning you want to take over. He's not here, you take over. Your husband is calling you. There's money. <laughs> Go there and take over, please. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a man that is raised in the Bible culture. He knows that a woman cannot, his mother cannot come and take over in his mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. No, he knows it's not, it's not right. So, but if once you know the scripture, you, you are not, uh, uh, you are not uh, 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 going to be uh, insulted. No, you say, Mama, please, you, you know, this is, I'm the one in charge here. Yeah. Okay. And my wife is in charge with me. So if you want to take over, Go to where you are in charge too, please. Let us not have that type of. So, so that the mother didn't say any such thing again, because the man understood the Christian culture yes. that a man leaves father and mother to cleave to his wife yes. for the two of them to become one. And that's why I say that if um, somebody comes and is uh, insulting to your husband, insulting your husband, they don't have any respect for you as a woman. Mm. If another person comes insulting your wife, they don't have any respect for you as a man. Mm. Because if they have any issues with your spouse, it's you they should tell. Mm. Mm. You know, yes, it's you they should tell. And then when they finish, you don't call your wife or uh, and begin to lambast her in front of them. No. no. You just say, thank you very much. Wow. And they say, what do you say? I say, thank you. I've heard you. Thank you very much. <laughs> And after that, I'm sure they won't talk to you they again. Won't. <laughs> they won't. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, I said one more question. But sir, like I said, please, you have to come back again because there's so many. I've never had this many questions. You, there's so many questions. Um, and we can't take all of them today. So we're going to have to um, bring you back again, sir, if you don't mind. Well, by the grace of God. Okay. Thank you. I mm. saw a question. Um, oh, I saw a question on divorce now. Where is it? Uh, I can't find it again. Okay, yes. Are people allowed to remarry after divorce? Um, the person says, I believe no, but I see some female pastors looking to remarry, and I'd like to clarify, please. Well, um, this is where um, the opinions uh, differ. And those opinions are in what the scripture says. Mm. So our Lord Jesus Christ says that you cannot divorce except it be for fornication or sexual immorality. Okay. And so what that scripture actually says is that sexual immorality invalidates the vow. However, okay. when a spouse commits sexual immorality yeah. and repents, yes. okay, yeah. then the onus is on the spouse injured or hurt yeah. to forgive. Okay. Because, because we have been forgiven ourselves. That's what Jesus said. You have been forgiven your, your million, uh, one million pound debt and you have put somebody with a hundred pound debt in jail. You know, so that's what our Lord Jesus said. Those who have been forgiven, they yes. must learn to forgive. Yes. Yes. However, if the spouse in question is not repentant, okay, then, then, uh, the, uh, uh, and, the, and the offended spouse wants to divorce. Yes. That's why the Bible says, um, um, take another person, get a counselor to intervene. If that doesn't work, get the church to intervene. 
If that doesn't work, then uh, treat the fellow as an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. So now, if the person that is so uh, offended decides to divorce, you know, or separate themselves from such a relationship, now, the church should be in a position to rule, to rule on such a matter. Okay. okay? Because the marriage vow was invalidated okay. by immorality. Right. That's why the Bible says the bed must remain undefiled. Yes. The bed must remain undefiled. That's why we follow the Christian culture. Mm -hmm. So, so, immorality. However, um, what I often say is that uh, even though people have decree, nisi, or whatever they call it, yeah. final, I have still known about people who after, even after that, they've come together again, yeah. renewed their vows and married, yeah. because they have been convicted yeah. that they are headed in the wrong road. Yeah. And, and because our Lord Jesus Christ said, let no man put asunder. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, a, 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 a man and his wife were separated, yeah. okay? So, the, the man said he doesn't want the relationship anymore. Okay. And the wife asked me, should I file for divorce? I said, are you ready to remarry? He said, no. Eh, so, if he's the one who wants to remarry, yeah. let him file for divorce. Yeah. The reason is because I don't know the consequences of that. Let no man put asunder. Mm. Since he's the one who put the relationship wow. asunder, wow. let him file for the divorce. Wow. So that when we appear before God, they say, did you file for, are you the one file for? I say, oh, no. no. I didn't file, no. Wow. It's the man who wanted to remarry that file. Wow. Okay. So, so now, but if you have a case of repeated adultery, yeah. without repentance, yeah. in this day and age of even uh, diseases. It is such a, 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 a an impossible thing to live with. Mm -hmm. And so, initially, there should be separation, mm -hmm. and then the church should come into it. And if the fellow is not ready, then he should be excommunicated from the church. Then you know that this is a situation where if the lady finds someone to marry her, uh, the church should come on her side and say, yes. Yes, because if you invalidated the vow. Yeah. You see, a lot of people say that oh, there is no divorce in Christian marriage. I don't think so. Mm. I don't think so. It's only, it's only, you know, if what the Bible is against is flippant divorce. I don't, I don't love you anymore. So what is the meaning of that? <laughs> if you don't love anymore, ask the Holy Spirit to shed love abroad uh, <laughs> in your heart. You know, if there is physical abuse, if there is uh, 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 all manners of abuses and, 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 and the, the church, the church has to come into it. Mm. You know, and the church weighs into it and discovers that it is true. Yes. You know, and the party does not want to change. Yes. It's not interested in change. Yes. And it leads to a breakdown of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Yes, they should remain separate. They should remain separate and see whether there will be healing. And if there is no healing, yes. you know, then uh, 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 um, a lot of people say, well, um, uh, um, but the, the Bible didn't say they should remarry. I said, I would rather have you remarry than commit serial adultery. Mm. Because a lot of people who are separated are in adultery. Yes, 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 yes. So rather than commit serial adultery, ah, remarry you so that if you get to heaven, they, you, if they are judging, they say you remarry. They say yes. But not that every week you are in adultery. Ah, no, that is not accepted. <laughs> oh, my goodness, sir. Thank you for such wisdom. Oh my goodness. Um, oh gosh. There's, there's another question. Um, if an unbeliever with multiple wives, and I think I've seen this with um, those obas in Nigeria, if an unbeliever with multiple wives becomes born again, how is the situation handled? There is no problem. If they're as an unbeliever with multiple wives, they're not concubines, they're okay. wives. They're wives, okay. Yes, that's, there must be a clear distinction between a concubine and a wife. Mm. But if he married a wife, you know, mar marriage has uh, three dimensions. 
It has the cultural. He's done the cultural because in the Bible, it's that pain of, va of dowry that yes. is the real marriage, really. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's why they say if you seduce a woman in Deuteronomy, if you seduce a woman, or I think it's numbers, if you seduce a woman, you must marry her. You must marry her. Okay? Okay, that's, that's where we give, from where we get all these rulings. Okay? So, so there's cultural, there is legal, then there is spiritual. Okay, so now, a woman has been married culturally yeah. and then a, married in uh, customary law, no, yeah. you know? So they've done two. So now the man gets born again. Mm -hmm. So these wives, they should not send them away. I don't know why the churches are teaching that they should send them away. Who do you want to send them to? Yes, yes. yes. Who do you want to send them to? Mm -hmm. You know, I was in Ife some years ago and the pastor told me that there's an allergy with two wives that he's now born again. And he's been asking me if he should bring his two wives to church. And his wives want to come to church. I say, ah, pastor, let the wives come to church. Oh. <laughs> ah. He said, but he, he, will be, he will have two. I say, yes, he already has two wives. Mm -hmm. Yes, he cannot change that status. Yeah. So, yeah. But the only thing that the Bible says, don't make him assistant pastor. <laughs> don't make him a leader. But if he has gifts, if he can teach the scriptures, if he can, uh, 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 yes, he can use his gifts and talents in the church. Yes, yes. But he should not be an apical leader because all, all the members in the church will now start having two wives. <laughs> if you ask it. them, they say our pastor has two wives. Yes. <laughs> yes. So th that's why they say don't make it make make a leader uh, someone with one wife. So yes. it will be the example for others to follow. Mm. But not that they will not be in church or that they should send away their wives. Mm. No, no, no. No, the Bible didn't say that. <laughs> oh, wow. So thank you so much. This has really been a, a great and fantastic session. <laughs> so many nuggets. I have to, we thank watch, God. I have to watch it again. You know what? Do you know, um, I'll tell you guys this. I sent um, some of the questions, at least some of the questions I had, I sent them to Dr. Nuzo yesterday. And you know, the person that Dr. Nuzo is, he just said, um, God will help me. You know, he, he's, he's so, he's so um, humble, but he also knows that everything is by the grace of God and is with the Holy Spirit helping them, helping him rather. So thank you, sir. We really, really are grateful for the grace of thank God, God. In your life. And the wisdom that God has given you, sir. Oh, it's amazing. I could sit, I could stay here all day and just listen to mm -hmm. you share. Thank you so, so much. Um, we thank God. Please stop sending questions. We can't answer all the questions. <laughs> um, because we have to go. All right. Um, okay, so thank I can, you. do you want to take one more? We can finish at 1.30. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Some, someone said, what is the difference between dating and courtship, please? There's so much confusion about that. What's the difference? Oh, yes. And I've always said that Christians don't date. Okay. Because dating is trial and error. Okay? okay? So you see John and Kemi, you know, this week. Then two weeks later, you don't see them again. You say, ah, what is happening? So we broke up. You broke up. I said, so if you broke up, how did you start? <laughs> yes, because you can't break up now. Yeah. You can't break up now. Mm -hmm. How did you start? Mm -hmm. Remember the three things, you know, the will of God. Did you find that not just that you like the person, not yeah. just that uh, you've prayed, but yeah. did you sense that this is the person mm -hmm. that God is asking you to spend the rest of your life with? Yeah. Yeah. If you sense that before you started, so yes. what will make you break up now? Mm. You say, well, we, we discovered that we are not compatible. I say, whatever that means. <laughs> because you see, all this talk about incompatibility, is, uh, they say, oh, he's not submissive. Are you loving? He's not uh, loving. Are you submissive? You know? So people always want to criticize and thinking, and they're often thinking that, well, if I get, a, a, get another person, it will be different. And they find that they get another person because they too have not changed. Nothing changes. Mm. Nothing changes. So we, it is when we change that we can drive change. Mm. Particularly when we are changing, then we can drive change. But if we are not changed, we are not changing. And what courtship does, 
you know, that's why we don't date. We don't do trial and error because you cannot have, you cannot have uh, any degree of a relationship yeah. without immorality, you know. And, and people who keep dating, going up and down, you know, sooner or later they find that uh, they've gone to bed. Yes. You know, yes. Yes. they've gone to bed, and 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 and, and you cannot you cannot have a, a a a Christian group where there's so much immorality, mm. because people are just going to bed up and down. I say, ah, rather than do that, have a courtship that is not too long, and then and then get married. Yeah. yeah. You know, once you are sure that this God is leading you in this direction. Yes. Then you can be your, your your two personalities can then work out through this principle of godliness, which is emphasized in this book between love and submission. When if you are trying to be like Jesus, I'm trying to be like Jesus. Ah, sooner or later we'll, we'll, we'll find common ground. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, I'm not taking it. Let me, um, if you want the book, it's available on Amazon. Or if you want the physical copy, send me a direct message. And we'll arrange how to get the book to you. This book is its um, a book everyone should read. Honestly, I read it. And it doesn't take long. I think I read it in a couple of days or so. But it's filled with nuggets. It's filled with nuggets. So please send me a direct message. We'll arrange how to get the books to you or the book to you. Direct message, please. Hangout Cafe. Send it to either Hangout Cafe or send it to um, Oluadiaga. That's my own personal handle. Send it to me. And um, Dr. Nizor, I think one last question that I have for you. Last, last, last question. I promise. <laughs> you've been, you have four children. And you've been able to raise four children who are successful in their own rights. I'm not saying that they don't have uh, their own issues. They don't have this or that. But have you been able to raise four children who are also, as far as I know, they, are, they love the Lord. Um, yes, have we, have we been able to raise them? Well, um, there's a scripture in uh, Joshua chapter 3. Um, it says to Israel, the ark of God is going to go into the river Jordan. Okay? Follow behind it so that you will know the way you ought to go for you have not been this way before yeah. that scripture revolutionized my life that statement you have not been this way before wow. you have not been a father before you have not been a mother before mm -hmm. so keep your eye on your guide yeah. so that you will know the way you ought to go wow. that is my answer because when I was when the children were young, yes, sir. always sought counsel about everything. Yeah. There was a day, uh, one of them did something. You know, I, 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 I picked up, I, I always used to keep a little cane the way they kept for me. I didn't <laughs> use it uh, very often, you know. But I they picked up my, my little cane and the Spirit of God whispered to me, there is nothing to cane here, nothing. Wow. wow. So you see, raising children, the, the, the Spirit, Holy Spirit has to lead the way. Mm. Because every child is different. Yes, yes. Every child is different. Yes. Even though you are the same parents, but every child is different. Absolutely. And um, um, whatever measure of success you, you appear to have achieved, mm -hmm. then it has to really uh, uh, be attributed to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. who put in all these constraints and restraints and, 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 um, and um, prayers, you know, so when my children tell, tell me that, Daddy, you came me two times. Everyone, and you came me three times. You know, I say to them, I've done very well. They came me <laughs> over 150 <laughs> times. And I only came two times. So I've done very well. So when you have your own children, uh, now, now, you know, the, the discipline now, I see my, my, my children and their own, and the grandchildren, go face the wall. In our day, you don't face the wall. Who has time for that? They will kill you very well, who facing the wall. But I see them facing the wall, and, and this and that, and they're, they're, they're achieving the same results. So, you know, oh, God. God is helping everyone. Amen. So I, I, I really appreciate how God helped us. Even 
even when it came to going to school, where they go to school, you have to ask God for direction in everything, mm -hmm. you know, because the children went to school from home more or less, and we always studied the Bible and prayed every month. At least we were able to do that before they went to school. And that helped for the five years they were in school for, for the bigger ones and uh, part of the life of the smaller ones before their school moved away from Lagos. Wow. So it's God, really. It's God. Nobody has been this way before. So you can't say, and you, you, you haven't been the father of this child before. Everything is new. Yeah. And that's why God has to guide us. Yeah. You know, I think one of the things we're going to get you to um, come and talk about next time you're here is the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. Oh, the companionship the is, is yeah. so wonderful. Everybody yeah. needs the Holy Spirit. Always have that um, desire to be led. Because yeah. the Bible says in John in Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, that is true children of God. Yeah. So always have that desire to be led. And all it takes to be led is to mumble a prayer. What, what should I do? How should I respond? You know? And that consciousness that you have to be led makes yeah. you say that prayer yeah. in your heart. What should I do? How should I respond? What do you want me to say? You know, and one, when you ask often enough, you'll be hearing more frequently. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we're going to get to come and talk more about it, sir. So, oh, sir, yes, please, oh, yes. one more thing before you go. Can you please pray for us? Pray for marriages yes, that are troubled. Okay. Pray for the singles that are, you know, they're struggling with who should I marry? What should I do? Just pray for us, sir, if you don't mind. Okay. Father, we are so grateful that your word is light onto our feet and is lamp onto our path. Your word tells us where we are standing. It tells us where we, are, we should be going. Oh, Lord, our God, by the quickening of your spirit, may your word be lamp onto the feet of everyone under the sound of my voice. Amen. But Lord, as they study your word, it will reposition their stance on the issues that are raised in your word. So that there will be couples, husband and wife, men and women who follow the word of God. And Lord, as they follow your word, may your Holy Spirit, the awesome Holy Spirit, be their counselor and guide. Empower them with grace and virtue. That, Lord, their lives will be a shining light to their generation. Amen. You have called us to be light in the world. We cannot be darkness with the world. Oh, no. Please, shine your light in our hearts that we may become light to our generation. No matter what is happening around us, let us be light in this world of darkness. Amen. And, Lord, for the singles who are yet to make this decision. You led Eliezer to take Rebecca for Isaac. Oh, Lord our God, please let that connecting angel connect them to the spouse of their covenant. Amen. You led uh, 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 um, the father of Rachel to give Leah to Jacob Laban, yes, you led Laban to give Leah to Jacob because the covenant was running in Leah. Yes. You are the God who does all these things. So please connect your children who desire to walk in your will and your way. Connect them to the spouse of their covenant. Amen. And may the enemy not deceive them. Amen. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, sir. We really All right. appreciate you. Thank God you. bless you. God bless and you. And you too. Thank yeah. you, sir. And a big thank you, Auntie Miriam. I'm sure she's, a, she's in the background there. Thank you, Auntie. Mm. Thank you so much. All right. We thank God. Thank you. I just want to say bye-bye. Bye-bye.